Welcome back. In this video, we're going to find all the intermediate fields between the fourth root of 2i adjoined to q and q. Now, recall in the um, fundamental theorem of Galois theory that if we have a Galois extension, which we do, then the intermediate fields will be in bijection to the subgroups of the Galois group. So that's what we're going to do in this video, is actually find the subgroups of the Galois group, and in another video we'll find then the intermediate field. So we'll abbreviate the Galois group by G, and we note from the previous video that, well, you have the identity element, and then we had this automorphism sigma from the previous video, where sigma applied to the fourth root of 2 was defined to be i times the fourth root of 2. And then you had sigma squared and sigma cubed. And then sigma to the fourth was actually the identity. You also had a tau, which when you applied it to i gave you minus i. And also recall, of course, if you applied sigma to i, that was just i. And tau applied to the fourth root of 2 was meant to just be the fourth root of 2. Okay, so we got all eight Galois, Galois automorphisms by just composing tau and sigma in all possible ways. So we could get tau sigma, we could get tau sigma squared, tau sigma cubed, and that'll end up being all eight automorphisms. All right, well, that's not what we want exactly. We want the subgroups of the Galois group. So this group, G, has eight elements. So by Lagrange's theorem, if H is a subgroup of G, then you know that the size of h has to divide 8. So the size of h is either going to be 1, 2, 4, or 8. All right, so what are the subgroups of g then? Well, let's do it systematically. Let's find the ones of order 1. And of course, there's only one of them, the one generated by the identity. Fine, we head on to 2. All right, we go back up to our elements in the group. We knew that sigma, when you raised it to the fourth power, gave you the identity. So that element had order 4. Uh, how about sigma squared? Well, when you raise that to the second power, you'll get sigma to the fourth, which is the identity. So in fact, sigma squared is order 2. So the subgroup generated by sigma squared, that's actually going to be a group of order 2. Um, if you take sigma cubed, well, squaring that gives you sigma squared, so it's not the identity. Uh, tau, when you square it, does give you the identity. That has order 2. Um, and now you can actually check by squaring all these remaining ones. They all have order 2. So I get a group generated by tau sigma, a group generated by tau sigma squared, and a group generated by tau sigma cubed. All of them have order 2. And since the only way I can get a, gr a group of order 2 is by having the identity and one other element, which is order 2, I found all the subgroups of order 2. So now we'll go to subgroups of order 4. All right, well, an easy one is to take the subgroup generated by sigma. All right, it has order 4, so it generates a cyclic group of order 4. Um, now, sigma cubed, you can check, also has order 4, but in fact, they generate the same group. So that doesn't give you anything new, All right? So in terms of taking a cyclic group generated by one element, we've exhausted all the possibilities. So let's put that into a picture. So I have G. I have this nice subgroup generated by sigma of order 4. It has a subgroup generated by sigma squared of order 2. And that has the subgroup generated by the identity. All right. Then I also had, say, this subgroup tau. That had order 2. And, well, of course, I could also multiply tau and sigma squared, and that would give me this other subgroup of order tau sigma squared. That also had order 2. Uh, let's see, on the other side, I could have a subgroup generated by tau and sigma, and also the one where you multiply tau sigma and sigma squared to get tau sigma cubed. All right, so I think that covers all of the subgroups we've currently found. But uh, there's uh, a couple of others we missed. So, for example, if I multiply 
tau and sigma squared, I get tau sigma squared. And in fact, if I take any three of these and multiply, or take all these three and multiply any two of them together, I'll get one of the others. So in fact, I get another subgroup of order four, which contains all three of these. And a nice way to abbreviate it is by saying the group generated by, say, sigma squared and tau. I could have used sigma squared and tau sigma squared. I could have used tau and tau sigma squared. I just picked two of the three. Because once I have two of them, say sigma squared and tau, I get the product, tau sigma squared. So I get the third one. All right, I can do the same thing on the other side. All right, oh, well, let me copy up here first. So I have sigma squared tau. On the other side, I could say multiply the sigma squared and the tau sigma, and that would give me tau sigma cubed. I get the third one. I take any two of these three and multiply them, I get the third. So in fact, I get another subgroup of order four, generated by, say, sigma squared and tau sigma. And it'll contain all three of these subgroups. All right, so I can toss those, that one in, sigma squared, tau sigma. And of course, all of these contain the identity. All right, and of course, all of these are contained in G. All right, and now if I want to build another subgroup of order four, well, I would have to combine these elements in some other unique way. And playing around for just a little bit, you're going to see that as soon as you have a sigma and a tau in your subgroup, you get all of G. And any other way that we try to manipulate this, we're going to be able to get a sigma and a tau. So these are the only subgroups of G that we can get. Oh, well, of course, there's one more, G itself. All right. Cool. So uh, in the next video, we're going to use this diagram via the Fundamental Theorem of Galois Theory to find